Hello and welcome to my review of the BTC3100 charger from Opus. This was supplied via Gearbest and this is the latest version 2.2. So I thought I'd get this in for testing. Very interesting charger. Not much on the box but it does go over the modes that you get included just to give you a brief overview. We'll open it up. You get a user manual in there. It's a printed sheet. We'll have a look at that in a while. And you'll see the charger is covered in bubble wrap. We pull that out and we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a second. We also get a power adapter. This is the UK version, so depending on where you are, you'll get your own particular region for that. There's nothing under this flap there. That's just a spare bit of packaging. Now, the cable length on this is quite generous, 1.4 meters, and you'll see it's a 12 volt, 3 amp unit. So it's quite beefy, and there's a bit of weight to this as well. As you'd expect for a charger, it's a fast charge. It needs a decent power supply. Looking at the charger in a bit more detail, feels quite well made, quite dense plastics. It's more of a dark gray than a black. The sliders are smooth, glide nice and easily, and you'll see there are some raised contact points. Some of the contact points are raised a bit more than others, and this is a reverse angle view just to show you. You have the elongated contacts at the top as well. Very easy and simple to use this. You can see just four buttons at the front, clearly marked in large letters, and on the back we have a fan next to the power input. Nothing on the other sides of the cases. On the underside we have some ventilation slots and four foam pads and some specs that are listed out there. Just a side profile view. It's actually not that big, the charger. It's only slightly bigger than the Nightcore D4. So I've put a couple of chargers, I put it next to them just to show you. I've done reviews on all of these and the other two. Next to the D4, touch bigger, but not much. And the Fox Nova, the 4S, is a bit smaller. Um, that's a charging and testing unit. The Nightcore D4 is just a charger. You can have a look at those reviews later if you wish. Now looking at the design of the slots, quite good actually. They've made the outer ones a bit wider. So if you're going to use the 26650 cells, which I have here, it fits in quite nicely. But you can also put these in other slots as well. So you're not stuck just on the outside. So you'll be able to fit two of those larger cells in. And if you put a cell next to it, you'll see there's enough space for a 18650 next to it either side. We'll cover the charging a bit later on. Even the smaller cells fit okay, but you have to watch it with the CO123As because there isn't a whole lot of pressure on them. They could have raised the contact points a touch more. So depending on how you insert them, you might need to jiggle them about a bit. But it's a good fit for triple A's and AA cells. They've made that recessed part of the curve there quite nice so you don't have them jiggling around like you do in a lot of the chargers. Now the instruction manual is quite detailed and I'm going to scan through the whole thing in case you want to look at it and read all of the sections but it does cover everything you need to know. I personally would have made it a bit more condensed and a bit easier to read. It does cover some of the information that you'll need to know. There is a trickle charge on the NICAD or nickel metal hydride cells um, even though it's using a delta V, which is unusual, it's only a low current, it's not a big deal, we'll cover that later. But it goes through the uh, included items and operation in quite good detail, um, including the charging modes, the discharge modes. You have five modes in total with this. It lists everything out from the safety side as well. There is an overheat protection circuit in here and there are sensors on the board and there's a fan included which... Uh, turns on and off depending on the internal temperature on those and this covers the operation including the charge, discharge, refresh, test mode and quick test mode. So it's quite a bit to get stuck into but it's actually quite a simple charger to operate and use. And just some safety bits of info there and the back section covers the specification. I would have made that a bit smaller and condensed it down but it's um, it does the job, it's okay. Now powering up the charger you see the backlight come on. The version also came on there as well. And you see everything lights up and then goes to null. Obviously because there's no batteries inserted. So we'll insert a few batteries. Firstly with the 26650. You'll see the default charging speed on any battery that you insert in this, be it 
lithium ion or nickel metal hydride is half an amp. So it always defaults to that when you put a battery in and that's also the default discharge if you set the discharge on the charger too. That's a reasonable current to pick because even if you insert a smaller cell that's generally not going to be too much current for it so that's a sensible decision rather than trying to select one amp by default. Now what I've done here is put uh, four batteries into the charger and you can see that you can scroll through the modes you have about seven or eight seconds to change the settings and then it's locked. You can either remove the cell and change the charge current yourself or you can um, press the mode, cycle through the modes and you'll be able to adjust the settings. I suppose that's a safety feature. So if you have the current set for charging, once it stops flashing, you'll have to do that to change it. I've listed out on the screen there all of the charging currents and discharge currents. This is designed as a fast charger, but that's not just the only thing that it does. Um, the testing functions are also something which are going to appeal to a few people. See, I'm running a quick test now on an AnyLoop cell. And if you leave the charger powered on and take cells out, it will stay on the mode that it's set at too. So you don't have to keep cycling through if you want to test a bunch of cells, for example. And what I've done on the left is set that to two amp fast charging. It's just the outer bays, one and four, can be used for the fast charging. You can set them to lower speeds if you wish, but you can't use the middle two for the over one amp charging. You see it's picked, you get a real time display on the current, so it's actually 1.8 amps it's putting into that battery. It depends on the charge state, obviously, at the start it will have a faster charge and then decrease. So I've set both to fast charging. Now that I've done that, that's the maximum speed um, is to have the two slots at the two amps each. As soon as I put a cell in, it will automatically drop down that to one amp, regardless of what I set the other one at. So bear that in mind if you are using the two outer slots for fast charging. Now also if you set them at 1.5 amps, same thing again, if you insert a cell into any of the other two slots, it will drop it down to one amp. Here I am with all of the cells at one amp charging, and that's the fastest speed if you're using all four of the bays at the same time. I'm okay with that because that's actually a pretty good speed. You are quite welcome to adjust the speeds if you want, so you can charge them at lower speeds. They're all individual, and the modes as well as the speeds are individual too, so you can test one slot, charge in one, discharge in another, and you can mix the battery chemistries as well. It's a very versatile charger in that respect. This is just showing you when it's flashing. So you have about seven or eight seconds and once it's set, you'll have to either flip the battery out or go through the modes again. I'm just inserting some nickel metal hydride cells now. As soon as you insert them, you'll see the voltage come up and it will show the default charging speed. Now, just to show you on the right, there's the CO123A. Needed a bit of jiggling. It uh, depends on the wrapper. Some of the wrappers are a bit thicker on these. Generally didn't have too many problems. It seemed to contact most batteries just fine. And you see if you cycle through the slots, it goes right through the one to four, and then you can select all of them at the same time if you wish. And that's handy, particularly if you wanted to do a test on all of the slots or a discharge on all of the slots. So that allows you to set that all in once, and that's quite a good feature. You also have the backlight, which stays on for default by 20 seconds. If you want to keep it on all the time, you can long press it. And then to disable that, you can long press it again. What you can't do is completely disable the backlight, though. This is me just running some tests through on the capacity tester. That's with the three nickel metal hydrides, and they came in very close to my other tester. It also tells you the length of time that it took. And this screen will show you that there is a slight trickle charge on those cells. I'm not sure why that is. It's not a huge issue. I just wouldn't disappear on holiday for a week, leaving the cells in the charger. doesn't have a trickle charge for lithium ion, which is an important difference though. Just inserted a AA any loop for this. Now you'll notice that the charging speeds will vary. So even though it's in the fast charging port, 
I'm on the discharge now. I can discharge 700 milliamps, or I can charge it up to one amp. So you can't charge over an amp for nickel metal hydride cells. And that's an important feature as well, because you really wouldn't want to be charging at a higher amperage, except that you had maybe a C or a D cell. Testing the termination voltages were good on this, just under the 1.5. I'm looking for between 1.45 to 1.5, and the lithium 4.17. 4.17, 4.18. It will vary a bit between cells and charges, but that was good. And also the exhaust temperature is around about 41.6 degrees under load. That was a quick recording just to show you the fan speed. I don't find it that loud, but I personally wouldn't put it next to a bedside cabinet if I was trying to sleep. It can vary in intensity, but it's generally pretty quiet. It probably won't annoy most people. This is the capacity test on another cell. Remember, it discharges the cell to get the capacity, so that's why it's fairly accurate. It's also in line with my other charger that I've got. It's very close. Now, if you insert a battery, a lithium ion into the charger and the voltage is above 4.12 volts it won't attempt to charge it again which probably makes sense because um, it's mostly fully charged anyway so i have four cells in here you'll see uh, banks two three and four are quite high so anything that's sort of around about four five hundred or above is quite poor i have the any loops in here and they are newer batteries, they haven't been used much, and you can see very low internal resistance. But the measurement itself can vary a bit, so if you flip down the contacts and test it again, you might get a slightly different figure come up. So I'd recommend doing that a few times just to check, but it is a useful feature to have. It can certainly indicate poor batteries, with, and they'll have a reduced capacity as well. Same for the lithium ion cells, good cells, should be um, under 200, under 150, but bear in mind you need to take off that uh, figure in the manual, around about 30 off of that uh, to allow for the rails which are going to be adding a bit of resistance themselves. That's why you sometimes see chargers with probes, but they're an extra thing you have to add on to the charger. So I'd rather have it on the unit rather than having something else lying around that could be lost. Now for the small uh, 10 for 40 cells these have a very low capacity this one's actually um, under the 300 I would select a lower charge current for this around about 200 milliamps possibly 300 max you don't want to charge those cells at a highest charging speed uh, they're not that common I only really use that cell for testing now another test on the capacity again I have an any loop and lithium cells and they've come in very close to my other testers I'm pretty confident that the capacity test is quite accurate also tells you whether or not it's discharging or charging and you get the accurate figure once it's finished the discharge you don't have to wait for it to fully charge now I'm removing the screws from the back cover just to show you the circuit board you can see the springs as well quite clean and well laid out good soldering that uh, black dot the large one covered in a resin that is the processing unit there's quite a lot of tracks there so there's a bit more going on than you might expect it's a uh, not just been thrown together with a few wires. There's a bit of technology there. The spring are also actually quite easy to remove if you want. And the fan has a uh, foam covering, which I assume is to reduce vibration. You can also remove that too. It's got its own connector. Now the termination voltage switch is inside for some reason. I have no idea why that is. It's set to the standard 4.2 for 3.7 volt batteries, but you can charge lithium ion phosphates and the other type too. So summing up really with the Opus charger, there's a lot to like here, some good functionality, um, particularly with the testing modes, and you have the fast charge capability too, and that is something which is going to be very useful, particularly for high capacity lithium ion cells, but also for high capacity nickel metal hydride. So you have big power there if you need it, but you can also charge the slots at uh, one amp across the whole four of them too. So really there's not that much to complain about some excellent uh, thermal management too doesn't get hot at all the cells are always very cool now just that switch thing which is a bit strange with the internal switch also the trickle charge isn't really needed for the delta v 
And I'd perhaps raise up the contact points too, just for some of the cells which have thick wrappers or are flat top. So a very solid charger overall. A couple of areas that I might adjust if there were another model to come out. But I hope you found that of some use, particularly if you're looking at this charger. It certainly covers all the bases, this one. And don't forget to check out my other charger reviews where I look at different models as well.